Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at buttery rounds. They're baked crackers. Or are we? Nope, we're not. We're going to be looking at some uh, kits that Rich over at RS Laser sent our way. So let's open this box and see what we've got. Okay, right out of the box we have, let's see, this is part number 4059. It's a brick building called The Grove. I can say I've built one of Rich's brick buildings before. He does beautiful brickwork. Okay, now this is kind of fun. This is part number 4049, and it's the uh, RS Laser Kits Speeder Shed in Z Scale. I've always wanted to put this one together. It's just, uh, it looks like a fun little building that you can put on the side of any piece of track pretty much anywhere. I've sped the video up a little bit and just flipping through the directions. They look good, well documented. Now, I don't know about you, but I am, I'm not great at following instructions. I wish I was, I'm not. I usually flip through the directions just to get a feel for something and then kind of go off on my own, referring back to the pictures as much as anything else. Let's open the bag and see what we've got. Okay, looking at the directions, everything seems to be in the bag. We're looking good. Now, one thing I am gonna do first, and Rich mentions this in the instructions, that painting, or at least priming everything, is probably a good idea right off the top. I've just put a little bit of painter's tape, um, sticky side up, and what I'm going to do is not take out the airbrush just yet, but use a little bit of my, uh, kind of my favorite spray paint, that is the Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. This paint is more expensive, certainly, than store brand paints, but I really do think it's worth it, especially for priming. Now that I've got a base coat of primer on, I mixed up some acrylics I had, just cheap acrylic craft paints, and uh, went with kind of a barn red color, or a, a close approximation. One tip I find really useful when using these acrylic paints is to mix them incredibly well. Now, I use one of the little Badger electric paint mixers, and it does make all the difference in the world. Now, while the paint's still wet, I like to take a Q-tip and just knock a little bit of the paint off. And since I have the gray primer underneath it, and I, uh, I move the Q-tip along the wood grain, it gives it kind of a nice weathered look once the kit's put together. This really is kind of a neat little cheat for doing some weathering. And you can see the paint dries incredibly quickly. This one little panel that fell off is already completely dry. Okay, the paint's dry. I've assembled a couple of the walls, the windows, and the front door. And here I'm just kind of fitting everything into the interior floor. Now, even though I didn't use the interior floor, as you'll see, it's nice to know everything fits. Okay, with some more walls assembled and the, uh, the side wall there, you can see I've drilled a little hole in one of the bases supplied with the kit. And I did that so at a later date, if I want, I can slip in a 5mm LED to light the building up. I'm going to be building this little tiny, tiny layout on a board I picked up at the craft store. And I've used the Rokahan 45mm curves and 220mm, a couple 110mm straight sections from Rokahan. I could call it a layout, I suppose, but I'm going to go with kind of a Z-scale hot dog shape. Now, RS Laser does include a little section, a tie section, and some rails, but I thought just to kind of keep some continuity here on this tiny piece, I would cut and bevel a section of Rokahan track. Here's that section of track ties that RS Laser includes with their kit. I don't think I mentioned it, but they actually do include, uh, from Shapeways, a 3D printed speeder. That's kind of neat. I think that might be another project. Now, right now, this is a perfectly good little test track, but of course I can't leave well enough alone. And I like Florida and I like palm trees. So a couple of palm trees because I'm sure I'm the only Long Islander who's ever gone to Florida or like Florida or likes palm trees, lots of palm trees. I thought as long as I'm adding palm trees, how about a little signage with palm trees? So I printed out a couple of pieces real quick just to kind of get a feel, and here's what I came up with. This is a photograph, this is kind of neat, I think. This is a photograph of the steel shield from the front of an FEC locomotive. According to the Broward County Library Digital Archives, there are 12 holes around the perimeter of the steel shield so it could be riveted to the front of the locomotive. I think it's kind of neat. And here we'll take one more look at the speeder shed. Now that it's all attached, you can see there's the hole in the bottom for the LED, 
We've got the window on the side and uh, a bit of coal dust used for the roofing material and that side wall permanently attached. This way this piece can be popped on or off the layout easily. Okay, I've got the speeder shed, I've got the palm trees, and I've got the signage. So, I can now go over and print out, there we go, all those decals on a sheet of clear decal paper. After printing, I also gave this sheet several coats of microscale micro liquid decal film. This way it prevents the toner from flaking off as you uh, move the decal around, which it's really prone to do unless you protect those decals somehow. Now, I could have made a couple of separate decals and cut out each one of these very carefully, but this is just a kind of a quick, fun thing, so I'm just squaring this decal up a bit. Now, that means we're going to have a lot of blank space in the decal. One reason I'm a little concerned about so much blank space on the decal is because this is very much raw wood. This is just pine or another softwood. I'm not quite sure what it is, but all it has is India ink and alcohol as a wash so water or any kind of decal liquid is going to probably interact with the wood somehow. I'm not going to worry about it too much. We're just going to have a bit of fun here. And right now we're just kind of playing with placement. Okay, the decal should look pretty good right around there. So what we'll do is pop this into a little bit of warm water and now soak the wood. And again, this is where I think the wood and the water might interact. I know it'll interact and it might do a little discoloration, but not too worried about it. Now on top of the water, I'm putting a little bit of the Microscale Microset solution because this, uh, this liquid is supposed to, they call it a setting solution for decals. This is supposed to soften decals and improve adhesion according to the bottle. Now I'm mixing it with water on top of raw unfinished wood, so this is a bit of an experiment. Now you can see that was in real time and already the decal is starting to slip off the sheet. Not to worry. Um, boy, it is like kind of fishing in there, isn't it? Okay, we got the decal out. By using this much liquid, even on raw unfinished wood, you'll see in a moment, the decal still slides around pretty nice. You can position, reposition the piece. And by using that liquid decal film earlier, and a good quality decal paper, it holds up pretty nicely. Very nicely, actually. Now here I'm just using a Q-tip to roll over the decal along the wood grain to get rid of any little bubbles or any excess liquid. Okay, with a bit of tissue paper, just getting rid of some excess liquid. Now I know this is gonna have an effect on the wood, just don't know how much. And frankly, I'm not that concerned about it here. Okay, now here's the piece finished. The wood is mostly dry from all the liquid. Now you can see discoloration behind the clear sheet of decal paper where it says rail dig test track, but I think I can work with that. Well, the wood hasn't discolored too badly from all the liquid, but I think more noticeable is probably the shine on the decal paper as opposed to the raw unfinished wood, but I can work with that later. Even after using the liquid decal film, I thought some of the toner had flaked off, but then I grabbed the original copy. No, that's just the typeface. It's this rough looking face. So that decal paper really held up well. What I'm gonna play with now is Microsol, another product from Microscale. And this is a more aggressive, I believe, setting solution for decals. And they say this softens decals to conform to irregular surfaces for a painted on look. And I have no doubt this is also going to affect the coloring on the wood. But let's go ahead and give it a try. Fairly quickly, I think some of this microsole is kind of creeping in underneath the decal. You can see the edges are getting a bit darker. The center is a bit lighter. The microsole has been applied to all the decals. And I'm really not going to know how it looks until the wood completely dries out. So let's move on to trees. Here I'm just going to drill some holes around the board that match up in diameter to those little plastic pins at the bottom of the palm trees. For a little layout that hangs on a wall, doesn't get much simpler than this. A hole, a tree, nice. Okay, here's our board finished. We're gonna run the little shorty, the Rokahan shorty around the loop, and this is being powered off that little controller that uh, runs off a couple of AA batteries. The decals look okay. I think they need a little more work, but for kind of a quick project, they're fine. 
The biggest issue with the decals probably is that they were put on raw unfinished wood and I knew that was going to be a bit of an issue. I've got to say I really like that little speeder shed. I think with that open kind of lattice work on the side it really does have kind of a, a beach look to it. I know it's a speeder shed but it looks um it looks right at home next to the palm trees. Really the whole point of this little loop up track was just to test out some cheap DC controllers I picked up online. That'll be in an upcoming video. In the meantime, we had fun with some decals, a couple of palm trees, and a little taste of old Florida. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, why not give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Help us grow. We'll see you in the next video.